we conducted the redirect, I believe, on this most. Am I correct? That is correct, Judge. Okay, so at this time, you may call your next witness. Judge, well, before we call our next witness at this time, the people um, are going to move for the admission of people's proposed exhibits 95, 96, 97. Wait a minute, please. Let me get to my pages. 95, 96, 97. 98 and 99. And you're not going to lay a foundation with a witness? Judge, these, uh, these exhibits are uh, forensic science division laboratory reports from the Michigan State Police under MCL 766.11B, um, subsection 1D. They are admissible without the need for, for purpose of the preliminary that's examination. preliminary exam, and that's true under MCR 1101 something. Have you shown them to Mr. Manley? I have provided them to defense counsel. I believe they did look at them this morning. I don't know if they need to see them again, but I'd be happy to give them Have again. you provided copies to them? They do have copies of all of them, yes. Do you have any objections, Mr. Manley? No, no. Okay, then you may for, for the exam only, I think it would be the trial, they'd have to have the lab people. Correct. I understand that. So, Mr. Chancellor, you may call your next witness. Judge, I would just say then that um, as it relates to Exhibit uh, 95, which is laboratory number BP15-3658, um, this is laboratory record number one. Uh, if Miss Lindsay Campbell from the uh, Michigan State Police, a forensic scientist from the Michigan State Police Forensic Science Division, were to testify today, she would be testifying that. I just take the no, reports. No, I don't object to that. I just, just take, take the entry. reports. Yeah. It's not a matter of what she's going to testify to in a preliminary exam. All that matters is what the results of the report are. You can't tell me what she's going to testify to. So just give me the reports. They're published to me. They're taken into evidence. I have admitted 95, 96, 97, 98, and 99. Is that right? That's correct, Judge. Then you just publish them to the court. <coughs> you, uh, you do have to put on the record, I'm sorry, you have to put on the record the lab number right. and who the scientist was and you must spell the last name of the scientist for us, okay? Then as it relates, Judge, to People's Exhibit 95, this is record number one of the of lab number BP15-3658. The forensic scientist for this report is Lindsay Campbell, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y, Campbell, C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. -L. Uh, People's Exhibit 96 is laboratory record number three from the same laboratory number. Wait a minute. 95... 96, and who's the scientist? The scientist on record number three, People's Exhibit 96, is Shane Hill, S-H-A-N-E-H-I-L-L. -L. Uh, People's Exhibit 97 is laboratory record number seven. That is also from forensic scientist Shane Hill. Same laboratory number. People's Exhibit, <coughs> excuse me, People's Exhibit 98 is laboratory record number five which is also the same laboratory record number, or excuse me, laboratory number, that was uh, also completed by Lindsay Campbell. And People's Exhibit 99, same laboratory number, record number six though, that was completed by Cassandra DeRuder, first name is C-A-S-S-A-N-D-R-A, -S -S -A -A. last name is D-E-R-U-I, T E R. Mr. Champagne, um, Mr. Ruder's name is the R capitalized? It is capitalized, Judge. So it's D E and then capital R E. Correct. Or R U, excuse me. All right. And are you admitting? Okay, you did. So 95, 96, 97, 98, and 99 for examination purposes only are admitted, and you may publish them to the court. And if you'd be kind enough just to let me look, okay? Yeah.
Okay, Mr. Champagne, let's talk about this for a minute. If I'm understanding right, container one, and it lists all the things that are in it, the results, I'm needing you to Okay, Mr. Bailey, yes. Mr. Champagne, Ms. Lindsay, you can be seated if you want to be. Just come on up and let me explain this to me a little bit. <coughs> All right, bring bigger. Ms. Lindsay, you can come if you feel like it, but I'm trying to give you a break here. <coughs> Yes. 
has received and discussed off the record with the attorney last uh, marked as People's Exhibit 95, People's Exhibit 98, People's Exhibit 99, and 97. Um, Ms. Lindsay and Mr. Manley, there was a copy given to me of the forensic nurse's report 
I didn't think that was ever admitted into evidence. I thought it was just given to me to be able to refer to as it regards her testimony. Am I right? No, I, I believe that was admitted, Judge. Was that admitted? Yes. Yeah. And I think for purposes of the exam, it was admitted. Okay, there's no... Um, on page, Judge, if I may, on page... Exhibit 92, Your Honor? 93. Yes. yes Your Honor. And this copy was given to me so I could take notes on it, right? It's Correct. The exhibit exactly. Itself. Correct. Exactly, Your Honor. So this is, uh, I want to write it in red, this is Exhibit 93. Yes, and for yes. the record, Judge, uh, on um, the preliminary exam transcript, Volume 2, from Wednesday, November 16th, 2016, the um, admission of People's Exhibit 93, the um, Sexual Assault Nurse Examiner's Report, is, uh, is on page 145. Okay, now, Attorney, as I told you, we got people listening at the door, and I'm not going to put up with it. I don't know. Definitely will find out who it is. <coughs> All right, now, Mr. Champagne, um, are you going to be calling the next witness, or is Ms. Lindsay, or is there other information I need to get? Ms. Lindsay will be done. Ready for the next one. Okay, yeah. thank you. Detective Nearing is going to get the witness. Okay. Does he have to go clear up to the other place? Yes. Can you at least tell me the name of the next one? Ms. Brindle. Ms. Brindle. Okay, you media people have your marching orders. Judge, while well, we'll take this brief interview, if counsel... We're the record. I understand. If counsel uh, intends, counsel said two police officers uh, here, Sergeant Johnson and Officer uh, Attorney Ogle, through the duration. He is officer for purposes of this. That, 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 that's fine. Uh, he's been here, Johnson's been here. If indeed they're not going to be called, I will subpoena them immediately. I think it's inco incumbent... Certainly, I can't tell counsel who to call, but I certainly can make inquiry. Like, I've, I've subpoenaed... Uh, can I just interject? Yeah. They're here. They're available. If I decide not to call them, I will not release them from the subpoena, but I'll turn them over to counsel. Well, thank you. Ms. That's, that's, that's what I was... Yeah. Everybody in this courtroom knows that I have seven days, six hours, and 53 minutes. Not that you're counting. Me.
Emily Brundle, E-M-I-L-Y-B-R-E-N-D-E-L. Ms. Brundle, in this courtroom, that microphone does not amplify, ma'am. So you're going to have to scream at the deputy standing at the back door in order for us to have an accurate record. It's extremely important we have an accurate record. <coughs> if you would take a seat at the witness stand, make yourself comfortable, let me know when you're ready to go. Mr. Moss, Scott, can I ask you... name again for the record please. Emily I've Brendel. I've done that once and you do that with each and every witness. I've done it. Please move on. Okay judge. I'm sorry but that's the you way. Get, you didn't do a habit. I understand. Okay. okay. Thank you. Now I'm going to direct your attention back to the day of September 14th 2015. Um, do you remember where you were that day? Uh, yes I do. No, yes. I, I, she's got to speak louder. You have to speak louder. Yes I do. Okay. And where were you? I was at Warwick Golf Club. And what were you doing there? Um, I was working with Whaley Children's Center for a charity fundraiser. Okay. And while you were there, did you come into contact with anybody who's in the courtroom today? Yes, I did. And who would that person be? Uh, the defendant. And what is his name? Mr. Cleaves. And what is he wearing today? Um, a gray suit. Okay. Red tie. Uh, there's more than... Uh, several gray suits in the courtroom. Could you point specifically to the person you're referring to? Let's have... I have no problem. Okay. Uh, Wait a minute. I want the record straight. Let's have her identify. There are several gray suits, but they each have different ties. Let's have her identify by tie. Can, can you see the, the, the color of the tie, the person you're talking about? I see a red tie. Her, like a... Indicating for the record, the witness identified the person of the defendant? Um, Mr. Manley? No, Judge Sabrina. Right. The identification for examination purposes is made. Had you ever met this person uh, before this date? No. Okay. And um, while you were at this, what time did the, you said you were working at some type of charity event? Yes. What time did this charity event begin to wind down, roughly? Um... I believe dinner was at 6 and then it kind of started winding down after dinner. Okay. And after the event was over, was a decision made to go someplace else? Yes. And where was the, where was the decision made to go? Uh, Sweetwater Bar. Okay. And was, was anybody invited to that, to, to strike that? Let me back up. Who was going to Sweetwater Bar? Um, some Whaley employees and... Um, a board member and the defendant was invited as well. Okay, and you say the defendant. The judge on that that she referred to him as Mr. Cleves. Uh, yes. In, in the she, investigative subpoena, she refers to him as Mateen, and she's advised by counsel referred to him as Mr. Cleves. Now we've got further the defendant. 
Yeah, it, it, the problem. reference should be to Mr. Cleves, and I'm going to back you up. You said the decision was made to go to the Sweet Water Bar, and who all went? Whaley Volunteers. Um, a board member. Are you talking about the board of directors? Yes. And who else? Um, and Mr. Cleves. And, and how is it that Mr. Cleves was invited? Um, through um, the director of development, Brooke Adams, and um, I was there when she invited him. Okay. And did you participate in that invite, in the invitation? Yes. Did you extend an invitation? Um, I was there when she talked to him, yes. Okay. And after it was talked about, was a text message sent to him? Yes. So okay. I got to ask that she now lead. Uh, you are leading. Okay. So you didn't get the right answer. I have ruled you are sustained. Thank you. Um, so tell me, there. you indicated a moment ago that Brooke Adams did an invitation. Yes. Okay. Was there any type of further invitation after that? Yes, a text from myself. Okay. You texted? Yes. Okay. And did you use your phone or somebody else's phone? My phone. Okay. And was there a discussion amongst the group about this? Yes. Okay. You're going to have to help me get on confused here, Ms. Lindsay. Um, Ms. Brendel, you sent this text message inviting someone to this bar. Who did you send the text message to? Mr. Cleese. And if I could back you up, you, sure. you said there was a discussion amongst the group about this? Yes. Okay. So the common object yeah. to that is being uh, without foundation, it is speculative of who the group is, and that brings in hearsay. That's an improper question. Um, I'm going to agree that was there a discussion amongst the group is too vague. I don't know who's in the group. Um, the discussion may or, not, may or may not be hearsay until I know who's in the group, what she's trying to get out is being said. So that's a little premature, but she's got to define the group better for me. Okay. Who was in the group of people that you're talking about? Um, myself, Brooke Adams, Ashley Sanders, Don Weisner, um, Brett Warner, Michael Bryant, um, Becky Flanagan, I believe that's it. Okay. Stop just a minute. All right. You talk so fast, Ms. Brendel, I can't write that fast. Um, Ashley Sanders, Brooke Adams, Becky Flanagan, who else? Dawn Weisner. Dawn Weisner. Can you spell her last name? W-I-S-N-E-R. Okay. Anyone else? Um, Michael Bryant. Old Brian, like an Irish old Brian? No, Bryant. Bryant. Yep. Michael Bryant. Mm -hmm. And then Brett Warner. Brett? Mm-hmm. <coughs> Is the Brett with two T's, ma'am? Yes. And Warner, W-A-R-N-E-R, -E to yes. the best of your knowledge? Yes. Anyone else? No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Now, do you actually or does the group actually get to Sweetwater? Yes. Okay. And when you first get to Sweetwater, where is Mr. Cleves? Um, I mean, does he arrive at the same time you arrive at Sweetwater? No. Okay. Is there some time lag? Yes. Okay. Uh, tell me about that. Um, our group got there sometime around 10 and I believe he arrived um, around 11 or a little after 11. Okay. Now let me just ask you, um, what did you have to drink? I'm going to back up. Did you have anything to drink before you got sweet water? Yes. Okay. Tell me what you had to drink. Um, around noon, uh, some of the Whaley volunteers had a beer once the golfers went out, and then I had a beer with dinner and a beer while cleaning up. Okay. So now, what cleaning up? Um, cleaning up the event. What did you drink while you were cleaning up the event? Oh, a beer. Now, you get to Sweetwater, is that correct? Yes. And once you get to Sweetwater, uh, our group are, is the group drinking? Yes. Okay. And do you have some drinks? Yes. Okay. And is this prior to Mr. Cleese arriving? Um, 
Do you yes. drink before? Yes. Okay. What is it that you had prior to him arriving? I had one beer before he arrived. And um, what happens? Uh, do you have more once he arrives? Yes. Tell me how much you had to drink after he arrived. Um, I had another beer, two lemon drop shots. Now let me stop you there. When you say lemon drop shots, what are those? Are, are those alcoholic beverages? Yes. And do you recall, do you know what kind of alcohol it has in it? Vodka. Okay. And you had uh, two lemon drop shots. Did you have anything else to drink? Uh, one shot of tequila. Okay. And did you say a beer in there too? Yes. Okay. Now, who was it that bought the lemon drop shots? Uh, Mr. Cleves. Okay. And um, who bought the tequila? Brett. Okay. And at, cer at a certain point in time, did you start feeling any sort of way? Um, yes. Okay. And tell me about that. Um, around the time we were leaving, around 1 o'clock, I was feeling slightly intoxicated. Okay. Now, you say around 1 o'clock you're feeling slightly intoxicated? Yes. Okay. Um, around 1 o'clock, does something happen with the group that's at Sweet, Sweetwater? Yes, we decided to leave. Okay. And what happens now? Um, Brooke, Ashley, and Dawn decided to go home, and Brett, myself, Michael, and Mr. Cleves were going to Warwick. Tell me how that came about. Does anyone object to that because... Uh, my understanding is, and maybe it can be cleared up, but I have multiple statements which would indicate she has no personal knowledge of that, and in fact she's, no she knows personal knowledge of, of where anybody was going. She said she doesn't remember, was told this the next day. Your Honor, so he, can take, that, he can uh, take uh, care of that. Don't okay. interrupt you. In fact, uh, that question, I, I certainly can cross-examine it, and I will, but my understanding is she was told that the next day. Okay. Your Honor. This, this is areas for cross-examination. Uh, if he would like to cross-examine on that. If that she doesn't have personal knowledge of this, she can't testify to it. Your Honor, that's what he's alleging. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I understand that, Judge, but just because he alleges it doesn't make it true. If the court would allow me to continue with my questioning. All you have to do is ask her if she has personal knowledge, then I can make a decision. Okay. Ma'am, tell me about how you were... Tell me about why you believe you were all going to Warwick. I was told the next day that okay. we were going to Warwick. Okay. But did you, no, Your Honor? Sustained. Okay. Unless you have a I, Yes, I do. Um, the 12-15 transcript. If this is going to be impeaching with a leading question, then it's improper. Because she would not be able to ask a leading question in direct examination. That's if she's right. going to use a leading question to try to impeach her own witness, then that's improper and she knows it. Your Honor, I can use a transcript to impeach. That is the law. Under Michigan Rules of Evidence 801D, I can use a transcript. And we went through this before. We can use a transcript, but you can't use an improper question. You're not entitled to uh, cross uh, to uh, leading questions on direct examination. Yes. So you, you can't break them. one rule with another one. You are leading, Ms. Lindsay, but let me review. This is the prior statement of a witness. Yes. And you want to impeach her with it. She's not a party opponent. So we're working okay so far. Let me just read this. And whatever uh, transcript that you want to read from, was she under oath? Yes. Is the statement consistent or inconsistent? Inconsistent. And why are you offering it? Is it to rebut an express or no. applied charge against you're, the declarant of recent fabrication or improper influence? Judge, you're, you're now into the second part of the rule, which is... No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You're in the consistent statement. We're talking about inconsistent statement. You've jumped to the consistent statement part. First thing is, you don't interrupt me. I'm sorry, Judge. I am in the B paragraph. I admit that. 
but there's also a C paragraph, one of identification, which doesn't apply at right. that point. So you want to go with the perjury. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Correct. I've got your stance. Let me go back to Mr. Manley. My position is, is twofold. One, the reason you're allowed to do those use the prior statements because that normally you're subject to cross-examination. Investigative subpoenas, you're not. So that, that's one problem. Secondarily to that, you are breaking it. If you allow her to read this statement in, you're breaking it, not you. The proponent is breaking a rule, a direct rule of evidence because now she will be not only introducing a statement not subject to cross-examination, which is the reason that people think that it's truthful, and secondarily to that, it'll be improper for a direct uh, examination because it'll be a leading question. I, I have to admit, I'm a little confused, and I may turn to your support here. Um, under 801, D1, it says the declarant testifies at a trial or a hearing. I would think that the investigative subpoena process is a hearing. Mr. Manley. And then it goes on, and is subject to cross-examination concerning the statement, which she would not have been at the investigative subpoena. However, she is now. Correct. Your argument, that's your second caution, don't push me. However, your argument is that because she was not under cross-examination at the investigative hearing, her, she should not be allowed to impeach her witness with this testimony at the investigative superior hearing. Is that what... That, that's the, Your Honor, that's the first prong of my objection. The uh -huh. second prong is that the questions that were asked are violative of the rules of evidence which she is uh, bound by today. In other words, it, it's a way to circumvent. If you want to do this, if you take this out to a, a, a conclusion, every single answer that she, this witness gives can be impeached and then used by, with a, uh, you know, direct leading questions, on which, are, prohi which are prohibited. So if she says, if, it, if I stand up and I object to the form of the question, which is, let's say, it's, it's a proper question, not a leading. She then can read in, if, this, if the court allows her, all of these uh, direct, excuse me, leading questions in, into the record, which would be clearly improper. She can circumvent, if the court allows this to go, she can circumvent the restrictions of non-leading questions on, on direct. Okay. I'm, I've reached it. And uh, compromise in my own mind. I am ruling. I will not be interrupted. You may use the statement to impeach. You may not do it in a leading manner. Because you have been leading quite consistently, Miss Lindsay. So you may use it, but not in a leading manner. Can I seek clarification from the court? You'd have to almost give me an example of your next question. Well, my clarification is, did you give, were the, you asked these questions and did you give these answers, which is how you... Yeah, that's leading. Um, but, but that's the way you... Just, were you at an investigative subpoena? Were you asked questions? Were there answers to those questions? Those are not leading questions. Okay, I understand that, but if... How do I... It's my understanding, Judge. Then you have to present them with the questions and the answers. That's, that's what I'm trying to clarify with the and court. I'm not to suggest the answer in any way, shape, or form. Okay. So you cannot say, did you say that the giraffe was brown and tan? You can't say that. Well, how did... What how did, did you say at the investigative subpoena, <coughs> the hearing, is a is a fine question, but you cannot ask her at the hearing, did you say the giraffe was brown and tan? Oh, oh, Judge, that's not my understanding of how impeachment works, but I will endeavor to follow Thank you. the court's... Uh, okay. 
Um, what did you say about the draft at the investigative and if the I would accept. Okay, and then if the witness, okay. Did you testify at the investigative subpoena hearing? Yes. Okay. And did you answer a question dealing with how you knew about going to Warwick? Yes. Do you know the answer you gave at that point in time? No. Well, looking at the investigative subpoena. She didn't say she couldn't remember. She said she, no, she didn't know. Okay. There's a difference. Okay. Do you remember? No, I don't remember. Okay. Well, looking at the investigative subpoena transcript, refresh your recollection as to how you remember. Um, or what? Well, would it refresh your recollection as to your memory about going to Warwick? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you to read the transcript over to yourself. May I approach? Yes. And read the transcript over to yourself. Once you read the transcript over to yourself, let me know whether your memory has been refreshed. Has your memory been refreshed? Yes. Okay. Can I take the transcript back? Yes. Thank you. How is it now that you remember the conversation about Warwick? As a combination of hearing it that night and then being my memory being refreshed. Okay. Next. So you I want to object to that because I've read this and if, if she says the prosecutor suggests to her that it's great to have now that you've melded the memories. There is no independent memory here. I have to say she doesn't remember. She doesn't. And, and that's can you know, you, can, can, can no, let have me finish. Quit pointing. Okay, let him let him finish. See, it was not even asked properly. It was a well, this refer see that I know what's going on. Yeah, it she wants to read in these statements, which okay. which are direct and they're improper. This lady can be asked. She doesn't remember. She was told the next day by her friends. She has no independent, and she said that. And Ms. Lindsay, no. I'm going to say to you, first allow me the chance to give you to respond to Mr. Mann. Okay. Your Honor, first of all, the counsel keep all the questions in the investigative subpoena were not leading questions. If the witness says, if I ask a person how do you remember that, and, 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 I, and, and, and Mr. Manley, to be perfectly honest, he, if he would be honest, would say, I told her in the transcript, now if you don't remember something from your own personal knowledge, tell me what you don't remember. There's a question in there, and I said, and if you remember it because somebody told you, and if you remember it because Sullivan, you remember, you tell me that. So I did have her just parse out what she remembered because somebody told her something and what she didn't. And she said she remembered that because it was a combination of both. Okay. Now, are you done? Yes. I'm ruling. Anything she was told by somebody else the next day, unless there's a hearsay exception, is hearsay and I'm sustaining Mr. Manley's hearsay objection. She said, before we ever started all this transcript business, that she was informed by other people the next day what had happened. Unless you can fit that into a hearsay objection under the MREs, I'm not going to allow that in. Okay. I'm not trying to get in what somebody told her. I'm trying to get in her own independent memory. And she indicated that she remembered it as a combination of what some people told her in her own memory. That's what she said. You may ask her about her own memory. But I don't have a problem with that. That's what I did. You may not ask her about what other people told her. I wasn't asking her about what other people told her. I asked her directly what she remembered. Then Mr. Manley got up and made the objection <clears throat> that somebody else told her. I was never putting it in. As you notice, I asked her. I never asked her, did anybody tell you this? I, 
And then she got around to it was a combination of what she remembers. You may ask her what she, how, what she personally remembers. Okay. I don't have a problem. Okay. Do you have a memory or any memory of a conversation about going to Warwick? Yes. Can you speak out this window? Yes. Now. We're, you're at Sweetwater, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, what time roughly is this? Around one o'clock. Okay. And what happens next? Um, Brooke, Don, and Ashley left. They were going home. Okay. Did you get into somebody's vehicle? Yes. Whose vehicle did you get into? Mr. Cleves. Okay. When you got into Mr. Cleves' vehicle, what was your uh, thought process as to where you were going? That we were going to Warwick. Now. Now, you're in Mr. Cleese's vehicle, mm -hmm. is that correct? Yes. Does he begin driving? Yes. Where, if anything, you do you recall? Again, Lindsay, okay. Please. Okay. Sorry. You, you're, did you get into the vehicle? Yes. What happens next? We began driving. Okay. During the drive, did something happen? Or did you have a conversation with him? Uh, yes, I asked for a phone charger. And you asked for a phone charger. And why was it that you asked for a phone charger? Uh, my phone had died. And did you indicate that to him? Yes. Okay. Now, you said you wanted a phone charger because your phone had died. Yes. And what, if anything, did Mr. Cleve say to you? He said he didn't have one. So were you able to use, were you able to charge your phone? No. Did Mr. Cleve offer the use of his phone? No. What happens next? Um, oh, strike that. Let me back up a little bit. Why is it that you needed the? You said your phone was dead. Why is it that you wanted to use the charger? Um, I don't go anywhere without my phone, and just so people could get a hold of me. Okay, so people could. Or I could get a hold of people. And so I didn't hear that. Or I could get a hold of. Somebody. Is there anybody you wanted to get a hold of? Um, Michael, since we we're supposed to be meeting at Warwick. I didn't hear that. Michael? Michael Bryant. Okay. And why were you trying to get a hold of him? Um, we were supposed to be meeting at Warwick and he was who I was riding with or who I was supposed to ride with. Can you give me just a minute? This okay. The council please. that you want to call Michael Bryant? Uh, because we were supposed to be meeting up at Warwick. Is there any other reason? Do you recall any other reason? Um, he was who I was going to be riding home with. Your Honor, there's a situation where I need to impeach again. Don't be leading. Okay. Judge, there's two uh, yeah. also objections still. The court has covered one. There's two, two, separate, two separate investigative subpoenas. One was stopped in the middle of uh, 
her testimony and she would refer back to review statements. And then there's another one approximately 10 days later. If counsel would uh, advise me of which statement she's referencing, I would Let's just call for ease of context statement one and statement two. Well, I, I can actually put the dates. Okay, that's fine with me. Uh, the date of uh, 12-9. Ms. Lindsay, for the court's convenience, can you give me the date of the first investigative subpoena? December 9, 2015, and the second was December 15, 2015. And Mr. Manley, I have noted for the record your continuing objection you, about impeaching. I will saw that. Okay. Now, you weren't able to, to use a phone, or were you able to use a phone at all when you were in the car with Mr. Cleves, or the vehicle with Mr. Cleves? No. What happens next? Um, we were on the expressway, and I remember getting off and going to a gas station or a liquor store. Okay. And did you go, actually, what did you do? I uh, went into the liquor store. Okay. And when you went into, a minute ago you said it was a gas station or a liquor store. Which is it or do you remember? It's like a combination. There's a gas station and um, there's a liquor store and it's like combined. Okay. Do you actually go inside? Yes. What, if anything, do you do when you get inside? I went to the attendant at the counter and asked to use a phone. Okay. And why was it that you wanted to use the phone? I was calling Michael Bryant. Okay. And why was it that you wanted to do that? Um, we weren't at Warwick and I was concerned. And is there some place you wanted to go? I wanted to go home. Okay. Uh, and tell me about the process of using the phone. Um, I took the phone into the bathroom um, into the last stall and um, attempted to call once and didn't get through, attempted to call again, and um, Mr. Cleves opened the door and said it was time to go, and so I set the phone down. I'm going to back you up just a little bit. You took the phone and you went into the restroom, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Why is it that you took the phone and went into the restroom? Um, just more privacy to make the call, I guess. More privacy to make the call. Okay. Did you said did the phone go the call go through? The first one did not, and the second one, um, I was interrupted before. And you were interrupted how? Um, by Mr. Cleves saying it was time to go. Okay. Then what happened? Um, I put the phone down in the bathroom, and it was ringing, and I walked out. Okay. Just we're stop. Ms. Brendel, you said Mr. Cleves opened the bathroom door? Yes. He didn't come to the stall, he just opened the door? No, just opened the door. And what did it, what does he say? Uh, that it was time to go. Thank you, Ms. Lindsay, go ahead. Okay. And now, and do you leave the bathroom? Yes. What do you do with the phone? I put it down while it was still ringing. Okay. And you put it down where? In the stall. Okay. And do you leave? Yes. Okay. Um, where do you go? I got back in the car with Mr. Cleves and we started driving. Okay. And you get in the car with Mr. Cleves and you start driving. What was what the next thing you remember? Um, being at um, a motel. When you got in the car uh, with Mr. Cleves, do you know how long you were in the car? No. Okay. What your, so your next recollection is what? 
of being at the motel. Okay. And when you're saying being at the motel, where physically were you at? Um, in the room. Okay. And and on the on the way to the motel, do you know what what you did in the car? No, I I believe I closed my eyes. And, oh. You closed your eyes. Do you know whether you had fallen asleep or not? No. No, you didn't, or no, you don't know. No, I don't know. Now, you indicated a moment ago that you're inside a motel room? Yes. Okay. And physically, where are you? Um, in, like, the back corner of the room. Um, and what were you doing? Uh, just talking. Okay. And um, at this point in time, what are you talking about? Um, I believe I had said that I had a boyfriend, he was married, and I wanted to go home. Okay. You told him you had a boyfriend? Is that? A yes, that's correct. Okay. And did you tell him about your status? There's been asked and answered. I can expound. I'm not that. sure I understand what the question is. It was what your status. Okay. He, you, you told him he had a wife? Yes. Okay. And when I asked about the status, you said you told him you had a boyfriend? Yes. Okay. And you indicated there was something else you told him? That I wanted to go home. Okay. And why is it at this point in time you're telling him these things? Um, I wasn't comfortable in the situation and I wanted to leave. Okay. And um, what is going on in your head at this point in time? Um, I was trying not to be rude, but also and trying why to And why were you trying not to be rude? Um, because he, Mr. Cleves, does do a lot for um, my place of employment, and so I didn't want to negatively impact that. Okay. Uh, did you also have just some concerns for your own employment? Sure, just me. Our phrase. You indicated, you talked about employment. Yes. Okay. Tell me everything that you felt in terms of the employment aspect. I didn't want to negatively impact um, what he does for the organization as well as um, my position there. Okay. And you said something about being rude. Yes. Well, how did you think being rude would impact on that? Um, I guess if he interpreted me as being rude, making a complaint against me, or no longer being involved with the agency. Okay. And um, was it your desire to be in the room with him? No. After you told him you wanted to go home and you told him these things, what happened? Um, he began kissing me. Okay. Now, you said specifically you talked to him about his wife. Yes. What, do you recall what his response to you was when you talked to him about his wife? That he didn't care. And at that point in time, does he do something? Yes. What does he do? Uh, he began kissing me. What happens next? Um, I believe, like, I kissed him back and then I remember being on a bed. You kissed him back? Yes. And you remember being on the bed? Yes. What happens next? You're on the bed. You said now you're on the bed. Correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm trying to get her to verbalize. Uh, just a moment. Miss Brendel, um, 
Would you try scooting forward just to see if we can pick your voice up better? Don't hit your knees on the witness box, but scoot up. Okay, now, Ms. who had the objection? I assume it's Mr. There is another leading objection to because the witness clearly doesn't, either doesn't have an answer, doesn't recall, doesn't have the right answer, but the, the um, prosecutor cannot give the answer again. Because of the situation, I'm going to allow Ms. Brendel time to compose herself and give the answer, but I am not going to allow Ms. Lindsay to give her the answer. Thank you. So the I'm question is on the table. Okay. I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm just, the point in time where we left off, you said that you were on the bed. Yes. Okay. Now, while, while you're on the bed, what is your going through your mind? That I wanted to leave. Okay. And in terms of your thought process, what were you thinking? Um, just that I didn't want to be there and that I wanted to be out of that situation. So what happened? Um, we were on the bed and he was on top of me and I was you there. You said he was on top of you? Yes. Did you want him on top of you? No. Did you ask him to get on top of you? No. What happened? Um, I had um, pushed him off of me and ran out of the room. Okay. And do you actually make it outside of the room? Yes. And when you were um, outside of the room, uh, what was your intent for going outside of the room? To get away from that situation. Okay. And were you successful? No. What happened? Um, he came out of the room and brought me back into the room. And when you say brought you back into the room, what do you mean? Uh, he grabbed me and pulled me back into the room. Did you tr attempt to resist? Yes. Did you want to go back in the room? No. You get back in the room, or do you get back in the room? Yes. Okay. What happens next? Um, I remember being back on the bed. I'm um, sorry, I didn't hear you. I remember being back on the bed. Okay. Now, can I back you up yeah. and ask you, your phone, you had earlier said your phone is de was dead? Yes. Is, is your phone still dead? You, did you ever get a chance to charge it? It was still dead. Okay. And as far as you knew, did anybody know where you were? No. So. Were you able to successfully, after you got out of the room the first time, were you successfully, were you, were you successful in your attempt to stay outside of the room? No. Okay. It is leading direction. I was afraid. Okay. Um, we got her back in the room uh, and okay. back on the bed. Can okay. we pick it up there? Okay. So now, when you're back on the bed, um, physically, between the two of you, who's the bigger person? Him or you? Him. Okay. How does that play into your, or does that play into your thought process at all? Yes. Tell me how. Um, I didn't want to be there, but as far as getting out of that situation, if it came down to some type of physical issue, I'm not exactly going to win that situation. Okay. So what happens now? Um, we were on the bed and um, he was touching me with his hands and um, okay I want to back you up just a little bit um, when you talked about um, you didn't think you were going to, to, to win a situation if it got physical mm -hmm. it, that you have to answer out loud yeah. Um, okay. What did you think would happen, or did you think something would happen in terms of your? Did, did you think something would happen if you physically tried to resist? Just that I wouldn't 
be able to get out of the situation um, if I tried to resist. In terms of that, did you fear, fear for your safety? Same objection. Um, you are leading because you are suggesting the answer. Okay. Um, Do you, okay, I, I will phrase. Who, what, where? Do, not that hard. Well, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jim. I thought I heard counsel say something personal to Ms. He did not. I was did he not say it's not that hard? I was directing it to the court. He was directing it to, to me. Court. And I'm not going to start this today because I will finish it. The who, what, where, when, and why to the court was said to me. He was looking directly at me. No, judge, I didn't say anything. I understand that. <laughs> okay. I was kind of chastising your protector. Okay. <laughs> um, let me... Now, you began to tell us now that he began to touch you. Yes. Okay. Where is it that he began to touch you? Um, his hands were on my private areas. And when you say private areas, you can be more specific. Between my legs. Between your legs? Yes. And when you talk about between your legs, you have to be more specific. Um, my vagina area. Okay. Your vagina area, he was touching you, and at this point in time, uh, do you have uh, your underwear on or do you have your underwear off? I believe it was on. Okay. At that point. Now, he's, you said he's touching you on your private areas. Yes. What happens next? Um, I remember um, I remember feeling I felt his penis up against my vagina area. You, you felt I'm sorry, I, yes. I didn't hear her. Could, could you repeat that a little louder? I felt his penis up against my vagina. Okay. And was this, now you mentioned earlier you believe your underwear was on. Was your, tell me about the situation with underwear. I believe my underwear was off at that point, but I don't recall how they got there. Okay. What happens next? Um, I felt him beginning to insert his penis inside me, and so I pushed him off of me and ran out of the room a second time. that you don't remember whether your underwear was on or off when he was pushing his penis against your vagina. Remember saying that? She did that? not say that. Uh, okay. I thought she said she did. on the record. 
Okay. Um, do you recall a moment ago you said your underwear was off, but you don't recall how they got off? Remember saying that a moment ago? Yes. Did you testify at the investigative subpoena on December? No objection is recognized. December. 15th, uh, 2015. Did you testify? Yes. Okay. And do you recall the answer you gave to a question about that when you testified then? I remember I gave an answer, but I don't remember what my answer is. What, looking at the transfer refresher uh, recollection of what you said? Yes. Well, the reason I highlight and just to explain it to me because it focuses the, the witness's attention on the specific place to read, which you can do by page number and lines. I find it easier because the and this court objects to it. Okay. I do not want it highlighted. You may give her the page. You may tell her what. Okay, well, it's already highlighted. I so. understand that. I'm talking about in the future. Okay, well then. Um, you can give her the lines, but okay. I do not want you highlighted. Well, for the record, uh, page 38, lines 25 over to page uh, 39, uh, the whole page. Okay, you may give her that. In the future, please do not highlight. Yes, Your Honor. from the bottom of the back. That page is the only next page. Have a chance to read that? Yes. Now, please speak up, ma'am. Yes. Now, I'm going to ask you does that refresh your mind as to the answers you gave uh, back on December 15th? Yes. Okay. Um, and could you tell me what you indicated about your the state of your underwear right before he tried to insert his penis? That they were pulled to the side and not all the way off. The, the, when they you say they were pulled to the my side, underwear were what pulled. are you talking about? Okay, we're talking at the same time, so. When you say they were pulled to the side, could you tell the judge what you meant by they were pulled to the side and who pulled them to the side? He pulled the area over my vagina to the side. And then what, if anything, did he begin to do? Begin to insert himself. And then what did you do? I pushed him off and ran out of the room. Okay, and was this for the second time? Yes. What happens next? Um, I ran out of the room and he came out of the room a second time and um, brought me back into the room. And when you say brought you back into the room, I'm, I wanna back up a little bit. When you were outside of the room, did you see any other human being? 
Yes, I saw a woman in the window of another room. Okay. And what, if any, action did you take in relationship to that woman? I mouthed, help me. What happens next? Um... You're, you're outside the room. You, you indicated that somebody came out the room to get you. Who came out of the room? Did somebody come out of the room after you? Yes. Who he came out of the room after you? Mr. Cleves came out of the room after me. Okay. And when you left the room, why did you leave the room? I wanted to leave. I wanted to go home. Did you want to go back in the room with him? No. Did you end up? It's the same move. It's a continuing objection. Absolutely. Okay. Do you want a multi? Before you're... Go ahead, Miss. Okay. How do you get back into the room? Um, he pulled me back into the room. Okay. Did you go willingly? No. Once you're back in the room, what if anything happens? I remember being with the woman next. Okay. So you have no memory from, or are you saying you have no memory from the point in time you went back in the room? Yes. Okay. The next memory you have is what? Being with um, the woman that I saw in the window. Okay. What happens now? Um, she called the police and uh, Michael and my mom. And when you Can say you Michael, stop. excuse me, I'm sorry, Judge. Can you stop? Just okay. Can I have just a moment? <coughs> Ms. Crandell, you said the next thing you remembered was being in the room with the lady. Yeah. And I missed the last half of what you said. Um, Something about your mom. She had called the police, my mom, and Michael. Who is she? Uh, the woman that was in the room. Now, when you're in the ladies' room, could you tell me how you were feeling? Um, I was extremely upset and... When you say extremely upset, could you be more specific than that? I was in kind of like a panic state. Um, and what do you mean by that? Just describe that for us. I wanted to go home, I wanted to be out of the situation, and, um... Do you recall whether you were crying or not? Yes, I was crying. Could you tell me, um... Did you have any thoughts about your safety? Um... You know, you're suggesting answers. Well, yeah. no, no, Judge, can I, can I just make a record, objection, Judge? Please. Well, first of all, you didn't object until I said, you're leading again, so I'm going to listen to Ms. Lindsay right now. It's not because I'm not suggesting an answer because she could say, no, I didn't. I mean, in, uh, a, in, a, in any thoughts, I'm not say, saying any specific thoughts because she would have to say yes or no, and then she would expound. You are suggesting answers to her. Asking if she had any concerns for her safety is suggesting that she did. <laughs> Just ask her what her thoughts are. Could you tell the judge what your thought process was at this point in time? Um, I just wanted to go home. I was extremely upset. 
I wanted to be out of the situation. Um, I wasn't what Once I was in her room, I wasn't scared anymore. I was just upset over the whole situation. With this witness at this point. And Mr. Manley, you're going to start your cross. Could I have the victim advocate come to the bench? Mr. Manley and Ms. Lindsay come to the bench. question about the case, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Yeah, I, I'm still here. I have a question about the case. Pardon me, pardon me. Would you let me take that question? Yeah. Pardon me. What can I ask? What can I help you? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. 